Hello everyone and welcome to Contemporary Math. We're starting a new chapter today and this chapter is all about voting methods and apportionment. So when we think about voting methods, we vote on lots of different things including uh, president, House of Representatives, uh, state and local officials, uh, but there's also voting that goes on in things like sports. We got the Heisman Trophy, Cy Young Award, MVPs, all that stuff is voting. And you guys even have voting here at the school. Uh, we vote for ASB president, uh, senior mosts, you know, who had the prettiest eyes and, and those sorts of things. A lot of times we don't really know what goes on behind the scenes and that's what we're going to be learning about today in 15.1 voting method. A lot of times in voting we talk about something called a majority of votes. A majority is receiving more than half or more than 50% of the votes. So if 30 people vote in an election, how many votes are needed for a majority? Well, we would just take 30 and divide it by 2. So we split it right down the middle and it's 15. Now 15 would equal our 50%, but notice we need more than 50%. So in this election to have a majority, you would actually have to have 16 votes for a majority. All right, let's move on. Now in order to help us organize all of the ballots, we use something called a preference table. And a preference table summarizes the results of an election and it shows how often each outcome was selected. So in our first example it says construct a preference table based on the following ballots voting for favorite color. We have red, blue, and green and people were asked to rank the colors uh, in order from their favorite to their least favorite. And you can see here we had 16 ballots okay and these are all filled out so this ballot one was filled out B, G, R. So they liked blue uh, most, and then green, and then red. So what we want to do as we tally these votes is we just take our very first ballot, B, G, R, and we're just going to write it down here. And we can start tallying these things. So there is one vote for B, G, R. So we finished that one. Now we move on to our second ballot. And this is RGB. And notice it's a different voting order than our first one. So we're going to place that in the next section. Okay, and we're going to give that a tally right there. Now our next ballot says BRG. And notice we haven't had that yet. So we're going to put it in a new place. BRG. Give it a tally. Ballot 4 is BGR. Now if you notice, that was the same as ballot number 1. And so BGR is going to get a second tally here. So basically we're going to try to organize this so that we can see how many voted in each specific way. So our next one is GRB. Okay, and we haven't had that one, so we'll make a new column for that. We'll put a 1 there. Ballot number 6 is RBG. And again, this is a new one. So we'll put a 1 there. And now we have a BGR. And that was like our first one. So we're going to put another tally there, and a BRG, so that one's going to go right here. Okay, so I want you to continue this process for the next eight ballots, all right? If we get any new orders, just write it right here, and then tally them up. Go ahead and pause the video, you can come on back when you're done. All right, welcome back. So you should have gotten four, two, four, two, three, and then there was another uh, ballot right here, number 14. 
that was GBR, and so that's a 1 right there. This preference table now joins all these ballots together and puts it in a form that's a little bit easier to look at. All right, so let's move on. Now that we have our preference table, we're going to talk about methods of voting. Now there are four main methods that we're going to cover. We're going to cover plurality, plurality with elimination, board account, and pairwise comparison. So we're going to go through the steps on how to do each one, and I want you to write these down and, and think about them. So at first, just listen to it, uh, listen to the explanation, and then uh, you can pause the video to record all the words. So the first type is plurality. And in this type of voting, each voter votes for only one candidate. And then the candidate receiving the most votes is declared the winner. Now, if we're looking at a preference table, we would look only at the first place votes. So we would just see whoever has the most first place votes is the winner. In plurality with elimination, again, each voter votes for only one candidate. And if we're using our preference table, again, we're just going to be looking at our first place votes. Now, if a candidate receives a majority of votes, that candidate is declared the winner. So if they get more than half of the first place votes, they are automatically the winner. Now, if no candidate receives a majority, so the votes are spread out a little bit more, you're going to go ahead and eliminate the candidate with the fewest first place votes and then hold another election. So this is where that elimination comes in. Look for a majority. If you don't have one, eliminate the person with the least amount of votes. Now, in the event that there's a tie for the fewest votes, eliminate all the candidates tied. Then, uh, when you hold that other election, the person you eliminated, all of their first place votes would then bump up. And we would just follow the preference to, to see who gets the next first place votes. And we're going to do an example of this to show how this is done. Then you're going to repeat this process until a candidate receives a majority. So you might have to do several votes, okay, keep canceling out uh, to find your winner who got the majority. Next is something called the Borda count. In this type of voting, the voters actually rank the candidates from most favorable to least favorable. So now this is really where our preference table comes in handy because we're going to be using the whole thing here. Now each last place vote is awarded one point and then each next to last place vote would get two points. Each third from last place vote would get three points and so forth. Now when we t total up all of the points whichever candidate receives the most points is the winner of the election. Now this one is definitely used in sports voting. This is how the Cy Young Award winner and the Heisman Trophy winner are chosen. So each person kind of gets more than one vote, but they rank the people they like in order, and then they get more points if you're a first place vote than if you're a last place vote. In our next voting method, pairwise comparison, the voters again rank the candidates, so we're using the whole preference table. Now it's just what it says, a pairwise comparison. So each candidate is compared in isolation against each of the other candidates. So we just pair them up and then compare them to each other. So when you do this, the preferred candidate between the pair receives one point. So whoever got more first place votes between the two compared head to head gets the point. Now, if the candidates tie, each is going to receive half a point. Now, after making all the comparison, so you do all the different possible pairs, the candidate receiving the most points is declared the winner. All right, so let's look at an example here. Here is uh, voting for math club president, a highly prestigious uh, position. Four students are running for president. We have Jerry, 
we have Tom, Annette, and Becky. And the club members were asked to rank all the candidates. So this is our preference table based on all of the ballots that were cast. So some questions we can ask are how many students voted in the election? Well, to find that answer, all we would have to do is add up all these votes right here. So a calculator is going to be a good thing to have for this chapter. So make sure you come to class with your calculator for this entire chapter. Okay, so we're just going to do this real quick. We got 14 plus 12 plus 9 plus 4 plus 1. And we have a total of 40. So how many students voted in the election? There's 40. Now we can also ask specific questions. So how many students selected the candidates in this order? A, J, B, T. Okay. So I see A, J, B, T right here. And so this is telling me that nine students voted in this order. Now the next question says, how many students selected A as their first choice? So if I'm looking at A as their first choice, I just go across the first column here. And I see here is an A, and here is an A. So in total, we would just add up the 9 here and the 1 here. And so A received 10 first place votes. Okay, so let's talk about who would win the election using each of the methods. So let's start with plurality. So plurality is based on the number of first place votes. So actually we don't need any of these votes for plurality. We actually don't care if you voted second, third, or fourth. Okay, so now we're just looking at the total. And so we want to see how many votes, first place votes, did Tom get? How many first place votes did Jerry get? Annette? And also Becky. So for Tom, you can see he's right here. And he gets his 14 votes. Next we'll look for Jerry's votes. And Jerry's first place votes are all right here. And so he gets a total of 4. Next we'll look at Annette's first place votes. Okay, and Annette actually received first place votes here as well as here. Okay, so Annette's going to get 9 plus 1. She's going to get 10. And then Becky here receives first place votes right here, and so she gets 12. So looking at this, who is the winner? Who got the most first place votes? Well, it looks like it's going to be Tom. So Tom's our winner. And did the winner get a majority? So it's always kind of interesting to think about. Well, we knew there were 40 people. So if we divided this by 2, it would be 20, meaning a majority would need 21 votes. So did Tom get the majority? No, he didn't. All right, but he still wins using plurality. Let's move on. Our next here is called plurality with elimination. What we just found was plurality, remember? And Tom won this with 14 votes. Uh, Jerry, remember, had a total of 4. Annette had a total of 10. 
and Becky had 12. So remember that Tom was our winner, but this is not a majority. When we do plurality with elimination, the winner has to have the most first place votes, but also have a majority. Now, since this is not the case, what we're going to do is go ahead and cross off the person with the fewest first place votes. And so we eliminate Jerry, because he only had four. So what that means is Jerry is going to get crossed off in the preference table. And then we think in our mind, everybody moves up who can. Okay, and so I'm just going to rewrite this preference table here so that we can see it. You don't always have to do this because you can see now that, that Annette would be in second place here. But we're just going to rewrite it here. As if Jerry never even existed. All right, so this is essentially uh, having a second vote cast because we would assume people would vote the same way and if Jerry wasn't an option, well, everybody would just, you know, you would move to your second choice. So now we're going to do the same process again and we need to figure out how many votes each of these remaining candidates get. So we have Tom, Annette, and Becky left. Okay, so Tom right here still has his 14 votes, and that's it. Becky now has 12 plus these four that she got from Jerry, so she's now up to 16. And Annette still has her 10 votes right here. Now looking at this, who would win plurality? Well, Becky would win. But does she win with a majority? So remember, we had talked about uh, for a majority, you need 21 votes. So remember, for a majority, we need 21 or higher. Okay? So this is not a majority. Therefore, we don't have a winner yet. And so we just keep eliminating the person with the fewest first place votes. So looking at this, we can eliminate Annette because she has only 10. So Annette is going to get crossed off in all of these spots. Now this is a big deal because she had 10 first place votes that are now going to get distributed. So we're going to rewrite our preference table now as if Annette was gone. And now we just have Tom and Becky. So Tom still just has his 14 first place votes. Becky now has 12, 9, 4, and 1. So she is now up to 26. And in this case, we have a majority. And so in this election, Becky ends up being the winner. Okay, so make sure you understand this process of elimination with plurality. All right, our next one is called the Borda Count. And in this one, we assign points based on which place you got. So we just go down to the bottom of our preference table, and whatever was last place, we just assign one point. And then third place, we just go up to two points. And then three points for second. And fourth place would get four points each. Okay, now basically what we're going to do here is think of this as a multiplication chart. 
Okay, so right here, Tom got 14 first place votes. So we do 4 times 14. And again, this is where your calculator is going to come in handy. So 4 times 14 is 56. And you can either move across or down, it really doesn't matter. Uh, let's go ahead and just move down. So here we would do 14 times 3. And that's 42. And then 14 times 2 is 28. And then 14 times 1 is 14. Okay, so go ahead and fill out the number of points in the rest of these boxes. And when you're done, come on back and we'll talk about how then we can find the winner with border count. Alright, welcome back. Now one thing you may have noticed as you're working on these is it might be easiest to start with the ones because that's just rewriting these numbers here and then you can just do multiples of that number. So 12, 24, 36, 48, 9, 18, 27, 36, 4, 8, 12, 16, um, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. So that might be a, a little bit quicker way of doing that as well. So what we want to do now is go ahead and add up the total votes for each person here. Okay, so we have Tom, Jerry, Annette, and Becky. So let's go ahead and find all of Tom's numbers here. So Tom here gets 56, plus Tom here gets 12, here Tom gets 9, here Tom gets 4, and here Tom gets 1. So let's go ahead and add all these up. 56 plus 12 plus 9 plus 4 plus 1, and we get a total of 82. Alright, so let's go ahead and add up Jerry's now. So Jerry's here, 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 here and here. So you can just add all of these. So 42 plus 24 plus 27 plus 16 plus 2. I'm just typing those into my calculator. And I get 111. Okay, go ahead and finish up Annette and Becky. And find their total and then come on back. Alright, welcome back. So you can see I've highlighted uh, Becky all the way across and Annette. And here are their totals. So Annette got 112 points and Becky got 95. So in looking at this, the board account says whoever has the most points wins. And so that right here is going to be Annette. So the border count, who wins the border count? Annette. All right, this is an interesting one because it does matter all your second and third and fourth. So even if you don't get first place most often, you can still win by pulling in a lot of these other uh, votes here. All right, and our final voting method is pairwise comparison. And so in this case, we're going to pit head-to-head -head each of the candidates. And so if those were the only two candidates going against each other, who would win out of them? So let's set up our matches right here. So we could have Tom versus Jerry, the famous cat and mouse pair there. We could also have Tom matched up with Annette. We could have Tom matched up with Becky. Now moving on, uh, Jerry. Okay, Jerry could be matched up with Tom, but we already did that one here. So it's going to be Jerry versus Annette. Jerry versus Becky. And we'll move on to Annette. Well, she was already versus Tom and Jerry. So we just have Annette 
versus Becky. And then Becky, I think, is already versus everybody else. Okay, so these are all the matchups that we have to go against. So just looking at Tom versus Jerry, here's what we want to do. First, we want to see who would win the votes in each of these sections. So all we care about now is Tom and Jerry. So here's Tom. And here's Jerry. Okay, so if Tom and Jerry were the only people, these 14 votes would go to Tom. So he got 14 there. If we were looking at these 12 votes, well, Jerry is above Tom. So Jerry would get these 12. If we're looking at this one, Jerry is above Tom. So he would get 9. Here, Jerry's above Tom. So he would get 4. And here, Jerry's above Tom. So he gets 1. So we actually have 14 versus 26. So in this case, Jerry would defeat Tom head to head. So Jerry actually gets one point right here. Now we can move on and let's do Tom versus Annette. So here's Annette. And Tom was already highlighted in yellow. So again, Tom versus Annette. Tom wins the 14, and Annette is going to win all of these other ones. So it's going to be the same total as before. And so it's going to be 26 versus 14. And so Annette defeats Tom head to head. So Annette gets a point, and Tom still has zero points. Now let's go ahead and do Tom versus Becky. Okay, so here's Becky. And again, you can kind of see the pattern here. Since Tom won first here, he's always going to get those 14 points. But then since Tom was last in all these other votes, he's always going to lose. And so Becky here has a total of 26. And so Becky defeats Tom head to head. And so now Becky has a point and Tom still has zero points. Okay, I want you to try this uh, now with the remaining three and figure out who wins head-to-head -head in all three of these, and then we'll come on back to decide our winner. All right, welcome back. You can see the breakdowns here. So again, you're just looking for whoever was higher in the column gets those votes. Okay, so Jerry defeated Annette, Jerry defeated Becky, and Annette defeated Becky. So now we're going to go ahead and tally up our total number of points. So Tom didn't win any, so got zero points. Jerry won one, two, three. So he gets three points. Annette wins one, two. And Becky wins one. So looking at this, whoever has the most points wins. So in this case, Jerry is our winner. Yay, Jerry. So that brings us to an important question. Why is it important for election officials to specify prior to an election which voting method is to be used? So like when you vote for senior mosts, notice they don't tell you uh, how you're actually voting. Is it border count? Is it plurality? It'd be kind of interesting to see. Well, let's see why would it be important. Well, let's kind of go back over our uh, different voting methods here. In pairwise comparison, Jerry won. In border count, Annette won. In plurality with elimination, Becky is the winner. And in plurality, Tom wins. So let's go to our question. Why is it important for ele 
election officials to specify prior to an election? Well, the reason is a different person might win depending on the voting method used. So in our case, we had four different winners depending on the four voting methods. So to, to avoid any disagreements as to the winner, the voting method needs to be specified prior to the election. And this is a huge point of today's lesson, that we can have different winners with different methods. All right. Um, to help us bring this into class for next time, I want you to get on to Myolu and vote. So if you go to our 15.1 voting methods place for this voting, you're just going to vote for your favorite candy. And I want you to rank your preferences. So this is using a Google form, and it's going to relate to a project we're going to be doing a little bit later where you're going to have to do this. But just for first place, we want to choose which type of candy we like. Okay, well, I'm going to pick Skittles first. For second place, I'd probably choose Starburst. And for third place, I would choose Jolly Rancher. So make sure you choose a different one for first, second, and third. And then go ahead and submit your results. Thanks for voting, you rock. Awesome. And then the results are going to be compiled for me right here. So this is what I just voted. Skittles, Starburst, Jolly Rancher. So all of your votes are going to be here, and we're going to be able to put this in a preference table and determine the winner. So please vote before next class. All right, thanks again for watching. That's been uh, Voting Methods 15.1.